Today I'm in a 996 C2 Cabrio. Quite an apt car. I'm in Italy above Lake Maggiore. Couldn't really wish for a better, a better place to take it. So the 996 was always a little bit of the black sheep of the of the modern Porsches, a bit like the Porsche 964. Uh, for a while was the black sheep of the air-cooled Porsches. So I was really interested in having a go in this car and seeing what it was like. Now the reasons why it was never that appreciated was that it was the first sort of mass production Porsche. First mass production 911 anyway. And it was built to a price. So the interior for example maybe is a little bit plasticky and, and, and cheap. But I don't think it's that bad. Also, there were problems with the engines. Uh, they've got a bad reputation for reliability. Thing is, with all the cars that are around at the moment, well, any engine issues will have been sorted. And they're now starting to be appreciated a bit more, which I think they should. It's the first water-cooled 911. And dynamically, in terms of chassis and engine and everything else, they are really, really good. I wouldn't normally choose a Cabrio, but as I say, for these sorts of surroundings, it's not bad at all. Even though it's water-cooled, the engine's actually full of character and I think it sounds great. Now that may be because I'm in a cabrio, so you get to hear it a lot more uh, than in a coupe version. I know I drove a, a 997 recently and that certainly wasn't quite as, uh, as good on that side of things. now and I've been pushing the 996 a bit more it's a really cohesive package it all really works well together as a whole the, the only thing is the engine I find a little bit peaky so above above 4,000 it pulls okay and there's a little rush from about five and a half but generally speaking, it doesn't actually feel that fast. That could just be deceptive because it's quite smooth. Definitely still feels like a 911. You can feel that rear, rear weight bias. See, I'm used to a lot of cars that have really stiff suspension and this is more road bias. Which makes a nice change. You can really feel the difference. They don't inspire a whole amount of confidence. Steering is, is really good, you get good feel from it. The car's really agile, it likes to turn in. Gear change works really well. Very positive. Quite long throw, but not too bad. Fairly precise. Easy to use. maybe cuts in a little bit early sometimes but these roads are quite dirty so so as this slick ad shows the 996 was a big deal for Porsche 
Some 911 fans may lament the loss of the air-cooled cars and everything that came with them. The sounds, the feedback, the visceral feeling, and of course that classic silhouette that remained almost unchanged for 35 years. But objectively, the 996 was an improvement in almost every way. Criticism about cost-cutting, mass production, and the blasphemy of moving away from air-cooling is misplaced, since Porsche really had no choice but to move things on. I think even the much-hated fried egg headlights fried egg headlights have come into their own. But the real question is, is it still a 911? And for me, the answer is a definite yes. The silhouette underwent the biggest change in its history. It may be less raw than the earlier cars, more refined, more polished, but still handles, it sounds, and it looks like the genuine article. Has the time of the 996 finally come? It most definitely has. So make sure you snap one up before values make this bargain another unattainable Porsche.